Hello, my name is Aaron Murray. I'm going to be talking about the Teacher's Guide to Google Certified Educators Levels 1 and 2. This is something I just accomplished as part of my Winona State coursework for the summer um, course. So this is a guide on becoming qualified in the use of Google technologies in the school setting and really what that all entails. So what this presentation will cover is what Google Certified Educators Levels 1 and 2, what that all means, my reasoning of why I became a the GCE is what I'll refer to it as, my experience with the trainings and test benefits you can receive from this, uh, my before and after analysis, and a brief guide to, in fact, passing the test. So what is Google Certified Educator? Essentially, it's a series of trainings that Google provides, uh, and it deals with all of the things that, all the options that you can use in the classroom. So everything from Docs to Drive, to drawings, to searching, it's its everything. I mean, it's its so comprehensive, it's hard to think of just off the top of the head. I have a list on the next slide. Uh, essentially, there's four levels of certification. There's one and two, which is just checking your mastery in that. Um, but then you can also go into levels three and four, which is, um, it's a little bit more difficult to obtain, and I can talk about that at the end as well. But essentially, it's geared towards educators that are wishing to further their skills with Google Apps for Education. So if you are already a educator who uses any sort of Google Apps in the classroom or for personal use, this can definitely benefit you. It just teaches you how to use it more effectively. Um, it's a series of rigorous training modules broken up into 13 and 9 units that you go through and complete on your own time. Um, and there you get testing at the end and they cost money and they have a uh, 180 hour, excuse me, 180 minute limit. Uh, they are rigorous. Certifications last two years as well, so it's something that once you get certified, you essentially have the training for yourself, and if you want to keep your certifications up, if it's something you think that would benefit you for resume reasons or for other reasons, you can certainly keep up to date, but the training itself is good enough. So, it provides training, like I said, in Drive, Docs, Slides, Sites, Gmail, Hangouts, Sheets, Classroom, which is uh, one of the reasons I joined in the first place and wanted to develop my skills in this is because I use Google Classroom in my health courses and I just wanted to further that. Uh, calendar, groups, Chrome, keep, tasks, play, uh, search and advanced searching, and scholar searching, YouTube, Google+, the apps and extensions, blogger, communities, drawings, earth, maps, scholar, translate, and general digital citizenship and how to be online in a safe uh, 21st century environment. Again, these are the two levels that I did, uh, level one and level two. So level one is for educators who just basically have been using it or want like in the classroom or they've used it a little or they're no experience whatsoever and they just want to learn more about it and then test out. So it's it's pretty standard. I feel like if you've used Google uh, technologies in class before, this is something that you would be pretty confident with passing but definitely do the coursework anyways. And level two takes things a bit, a bit farther. Um, it's more difficult, much more rigorous, and it's more advanced uh, use of these technologies. So my reasoning is to become a GCE. Why in the first place did I want to do this and what's in it for me? So I'm taking a summer course called Mindset, Motivation, and Self-Directed Learning in which we had to complete a Genius Hour project. And it could have been anything that we really wanted to focus on uh, as teachers and improving ourselves and our craft or our school or community or something like that. And like I said, I'm a big fan of Google Classroom. It's something I've used um, pretty extensively now. And I wanted to really see what more I could get out of it. And so I, I found this as a way to improve that. And on top of that, I learned about all the other things that I can benefit from. And so that's the reason I wanted to do this was just to start with Classroom and it's just evolved into this bigger project and now I feel like I'm much more confident in my use of Google technologies. Um, I essentially had three goals. Now, my first goal was to become more proficient in using Google technologies just in the first place to see you know what's the cap, what's the limit, how much can I use this for, how far can I go with it. My second goal was to help students and staff to become more proficient in using them themselves uh, by me providing support as needed. Uh, in my PLC at the school I, I'm often the person who sets up forms and uh, shows shows the other staff how to do certain things, just like they've taught me. Uh, this is something that I've been helping them with, and so I wanted to take that and get outside of my PLC and branch out to whoever in my district might need it. So, 
My third goal was to become moderately proficient in Google Sheets, and that's because I was never taught Excel, and I had no idea what, you know how to convert that into Sheets. And so I wanted just to get a baseline and a basic understanding of Google Sheets. And I think I've done that. So I'm much more confident using that. And man, it's you could write a book on how much is in there. I'm not even close, but I'm moderately proficient, and I'm, I'm happy with that. So here's my experience with the trainings. Um, I'm going to first break down the units because I think it's important uh, to explain a little bit what they are. So there, there are three subject areas, and it's professional growth and leadership, saving efficiency and time, and facilitating and inspiring student learning and creativity. So in the first set of trainings, there's 13 units. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all. I'm going to touch on a few of them that I think were a little more effective for me and where I needed help. Number one, uh, save time communicating was huge. It really teaches you how to use the uh, calendar function and the Gmail function in ways that you didn't know you could before. Things like canned responses, for example. I didn't know what that was until I started using this. Or setting up video calling in a later date and, and how to include that and in, in invite people along with that. It, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to incorporating the school year. Uh, measure, understand, and share student growth is another unit I got a lot out of, and that's because, like I said, I wasn't very uh, familiar with sheets, and this has been very beneficial, and I can use that, and I can use that to chart data, and it showed me a lot of things that I didn't know I could do, and I'm very happy to, again, do that next year. Facilitate group work, that's building more on Google Classroom again. It's something I'm pretty good at, but I learned a lot from it, and unit... All these units are very, very good. Again, you don't have to want to be, you know, an expert just to take this training. You can be very, very basic and you will get a lot out of it. Or if you're someone like me who thought you had a pretty good grasp on it, you actually learn how much you don't know. And that's the best part about it. Level two is nine units. Uh, again, it has the same three learning objectives and there are the units off to the left. And they, this is more rigorous. I will say this is something I'm glad I took my time with because it was uh, much more, not, I wouldn't say difficult, but just open-ended. There was a lot more things you could dive into. For example, I never thought I would want to use Google Maps in a classroom setting because Google Maps isn't something you traditionally think of. But however, some of the examples they gave you from you know the teachers that say how they use it in geography lessons and history lessons and things like that, it's, it's mind-blowing. And I actually have a couple ideas I want to incorporate into a health class of all things. So again, you learn so much from this. Um, I think the best unit out of all of them was the last one, Give Students a Voice. I'm going to go back there. It really just talks about how to empower them and how many ways that students can uh, project themselves. And, it, it, you know, from every, everything from building sites and e-portfolios, as well as how to save search, um, save excuse me, search safely and, and things like that. It's very, it's very positive. So overall, my experience with the trainings, I have nothing but good things to say, honestly. Uh, this is something I was a little concerned about at first, but it's been very, very beneficial. It's self-guided and it's student paced. So if you're confident with something, you can skim over it and go right to the assessment or you can spend more time. You can go back, you can contact Google. There's all kinds of ways to find the answers and search it out. And that's what they show you. And I think it does a really good job of explaining that. Um, there's formative assessments. They tell you, they give you quizzes as you go throughout. If you need to stop and revisit a lesson, it tells you you might want to do that or it says, hey, good to go. And the tests are composed of questions and simulations, which I'll get to in just a second. The uh, potential benefits of becoming a GCE, again, it can benefit all educators, novice or skilled. I thought it was somewhere in between. And I'm really glad I took this because I realized that I wasn't using it, uh, all these technologies to my fullest potential. And I feel like I'm a lot more confident to do that in a classroom setting and to help students and staff alike. It can make your teaching and life easier, I will say. Again, I haven't had the chance to use this with students yet, but just from my own skill set, I feel like I've been developing on that. And so it can make your life easier. It's learn by doing. Uh, it does not leave you hanging. Everything it does, it leads you through modules and leads you in ways of learning this. You can apply only what you want. You don't have to take any, you know, everything you get from here. For example, I wanted to learn about sheets, and I did. I wanted to learn about classroom, and I did. Do I think I'll use Google Drawings? Probably not. It's not for me, but it could be for you and a lot of other teachers. So you kind of take what you want from it. However, you do need to understand how to use those in the first place to pass the exams.
And again, certification is only what you make of it. You don't have to pay the testing fee and take the test. If you just want to complete the trainings, they're completely free and you definitely can. I would recommend it. Even if there's just one thing you want to become a little more proficient at, I would, I would recommend it. My before and after analysis. For my course, it asks for before and after. Again, it's the summer. I haven't had any student interaction. I can really only say that I feel that my skill set has improved. I have no tangible data on this yet. But I, again, going with my gut instinct and my heart, I feel like I've learned a lot. Uh, and also, I would highly recommend this, the trainings. Again, even if you don't want to certify, all teachers can, can benefit something out of this. So here's a brief guide to passing the tests. They are 180 minutes each, and you will use all three hours. It's something that when I, first, when I took the first exam, I thought it would be a breeze and I could just blow right through it. It's not the case. There's about 24 or 12 questions that make you think, and it's like, how, you know, for example, I can't reveal anything because Google, but it, it asks you questions about how you would most likely use this technology, or what ways does this technology allow you to, you know, work in the classroom, and what can and can't you do, what are the limitations. But then also, like I said, there's simulations. So it'll take over and log out of your Google account and log you into a made up one by the system and it leads you through these different modules so it'll say uh, module one you need to contact these parents and it'll give you the names and they're ready in your in your book and you need to invite them to a meeting on this date and include these other people and attach this and send and that's just a very basic module but they do get more more in depth but it is interesting because it does take over your computer screen and you just work from it from there now it's not like a test in the fact that you can't look for the answers online, but you have to be smart about how you use your time because you will use all three hours if you're very fast if you're not careful. There's a couple things that stumped me on both tests, level one and two, that I had to had to look up on the outside and it took a lot of time and I wish I would have known it and I should have went back and reviewed those a little bit more. But as long as you are alone, it's that's how the test works. Uh, you can't be on your I don't think you can be on your phone. You can't call anyone, obviously, because your webcam is recording you the whole time. So you sit down, you take your test, get it done as fast as you can, but no one else is allowed in the room with you. So other suggestions I would make, always copy and paste. Uh, it is, I think it's graded by computers. And so if you're not specific and precise, it can count you wrong. So make sure you're always copying and pasting and finding certain things and and sending it to the right people and, and doing exactly what it says. So always copy and paste. Practice what you're unfamiliar with. Again, for me it was sheets and that's something that I needed a lot of practice with and I, I worked and I went through different modules and I went and read all of the things online it, told, it could basically tell me about and it's something I feel proficient in, but it's something that was on the test and I'm glad I studied for it. Take your time and double check. It gives you the option to review for later. So make sure you're double checking as you go through and make sure you're taking your time. And lastly, complete the trainings. No matter how good you are, unless you work for Google or have used these for several years, I would recommend completing all the trainings. You can skim some of them, but I would recommend not skipping them. Go through them and get the assessments done and make sure you practice before you take them. Other than that, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. I hope you gained something out of this. If you have any questions about Google uh, Certified Educator, what that means, or if you want to do it yourself, just look it up online. You can contact me as well. Gladly help in any way I can. And thank you very much.